Party go drink tea. It's your boy D Neo back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are once again with a passport too. Love their channel. Uh, five things Germans do that make that make them totally different from what Americans imagine. Before we dive into this, y'all know I need y'all to smash that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, get a video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. If you have a favorite video suggestion, you can subscribe to Patreon and leave it in the comment section. This is a Patreon request from Melanie. What we got? No, Germany and specifically Germans were not at all what I expected. <laughs> guys and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie and along with my wife Aubrey we are two Americans currently living in Germany with our baby sharing all of our experiences Aww. living and traveling throughout Europe. There are a ton of stereotypes Americans have for Germans and I would venture to say that most of them annoy Germans and unknowingly come from falsely applying an already cartoonish and overly dramatized perception specifically of Bavarians to the mm. rest of Germany. But then okay. I moved to Germany and found that even Germans have stereotypes of Germans and they are totally different from the stereotypes Americans have of Germans. Of On course. German TikToks, Instagram reels, or YouTube videos, I have seen tons of Germans poking a little fun at their fellow countrymen and some of their, well, let's just say unique tendencies that I didn't <laughs> know existed before moving here. But even beyond random stereotypes, there are just simply some things about German culture or some things I've seen Germans do that I never would have known about Germans unless we would have moved here like we did three and a half years ago. And that's exactly what I'm gonna talk about today in my video. More than a stereotype, this is what Germans are like. So first off, now he's got me intrigued. He's got me hooked. I, I like the way he intro that because now I'm very interested. But uh, so, so it's not just stereotypes of what Americans or other countries in the world. These are Germans picking at Germans, stereotyping themselves sometimes. Off, I just have to say that, like I mentioned in the intro, often the German culture that people around the world know is actually just Bavarian culture wrongfully applied to the rest of the country. I've talked about why this is the case in other videos and I've also talked before about how surprising it was for us to learn just how incredibly diverse German cultures are across Germany. So generally speaking, we all should know by now that stereotypes are often wrong and should be taken with a grain of salt. So I'll say for the sake of being a little more specific that we we are originally from a southern state in the U.S. called Oklahoma and now live in the southwestern German state of Rheinland-Pfalz. So, so our experiences are generally more specific to <laughs> these two places, although we have traveled extensively throughout Germany and have a pretty good idea of what different regions are like. But with all that being said, those stereotypes that are generally wrong that I'm referring to are often held by people that may never have even stepped foot in Germany and therefore haven't seen the reality of life in Germany. But this first thing I learned gotcha. about Germans only after- So know what I'm saying? All the stereotypes you got in Germany, they're mostly the Bavarian. That's mostly Bavarian culture, I guess. The rest, and, and it's being applied to the rest of Germany when it shouldn't be applied to the rest of Germany, it should be applied to Bavaria. I got, I, I, I'm with you, I'm with you. After moving to Germany are generalized stereotypes that Germans have for Germans all across the country. So maybe these should be a little more accurate. However, mm. these stereotypes partly actually come originally from a different culture. So the internet has pretty successfully destroyed the chances of any future babies being named Karen, as it has been coined for <laughs> entitled middle-aged or older white women who yell for the manager. Well, just like when you see someone matching this description in public and label them as a Karen in the US, in Germany we have learned that they have the Alman. What we have learned is that an Alman is the stereotypical German in Germany. In fact, on okay. the German network SVR, a famous German online internet personality, Phil Lauda, now has his own series called Almania, which is about <laughs> the most German teacher in Germany, correct, rule-obsessed, and um, 
lactose intolerant? Now, a so-called <laughs> Almond actually does generally embody many of the same stereotypes that Americans have for Germans as well, like being mm. someone who is always punctual and wears the socks and sandals, of course. However, there are even more specific stereotypes of an Almond that I had never heard as stereotypes for Germans until we moved to Germany. Like, for example, oh. unlike a Karen, a DW article once wrote, Almonds don't want to speak to the manager, they want to speak to you, meaning they are mm. also confrontational and will address you directly if they believe you are in any way out of line. For example, an Alman will personally berate you if, like, you cross the street when the red light is showing at the crosswalk or if you start to mow your lawn on a Sunday. Almonds also have memes about them waking up at the crack of dawn on vacation to run down to the hotel pool to lay out their towel on the prime lounging chairs and going back to bed just so they can make sure and reserve the perfect spot for relaxing all day before anybody else gets them. Or, you know, you find an almond's home if their lawn is perfectly manicured and they have a few garden gnomes directing the garden. Now, those are just a few examples of the German stereotypes of the almond that I am aware of, but let me know in the comments any others that you know of that I may not have heard about. So unlike a Karen, which is of course a common first name in the US, the word Alman is not a German word at all, but is oh. actually the Turkish direct translation for German. And there is some oh, debate wow. as to whether or not this is a racial slur against white Germans. But from what mm. I have seen from the outside looking in, it does seem like it has been embraced by many younger Germans like Phil Lauda to poke fun at their own countrymen. Now, there are countless Instagram and meme pages online that I follow of Germans posing as a perfect Almond. And as I have tried to integrate into German culture and society and blend in a little bit more, I feel like I've started noticing that I'm accidentally starting to transform myself into said stereotype. <laughs> Uh, so Almond, an Almond is someone who is the most stereotypical German. The most German of the German, uh, all the stereotypes about German, Germany and, and how Germans are, that, that an Almond is all of those. I got you, I got you. Lactose intolerant, that's new. Uh, I hadn't heard that one before. Uh, punctual, definitely correct, definitely. Uh, they gonna berate you. Hey, you better not cross that street when when that sign red. When they say don't cross. When they say you should not be crossed. Don't, I don't care if there's no traffic. They gonna berate you. They ain't trying to talk to the manager. They trying to talk to you directly. Y'all know some almonds. I love the fact you said wake up seven in the morning, go to the pool, put his towel over the perfect chair, go back to sleep, <laughs> and with that, but he reserved that. Now he reserved that chair for when he wants to come out later. Uh, I like that. That was funny. I want to take a second to ask all of you to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you are enjoying this video and also to give a big thanks to all of our patrons over on Patreon who continue to support our channel. I really, really, really do appreciate you guys. I recently did a whole video on a few differences in coffee culture between Germany and the US. I talked about a few things like coffee drinks that exist in Germany that don't in the US and one of Germany's most famous coffee stores that confuse us to this day. Now, one might question as to why I made a video about drinking coffee in Germany, because if you're going to make a video about drinks in Germany, it has to be about beer, Thanks. right? After all, the number one thing <coughs> Germany is famous for is their beer. Yep. Right? Well, one surprising I fact I learned about Germans after moving to Germany is just how much they love their coffee. According to coffeeperfect.de, statistically, a German consumes an average of around 166 liters of coffee a year. In addition, they drink just 100 liters of beer a year. Now, maybe this shouldn't really be surprising considering you would probably figure a drink that many start every morning with and have yeah. as a pick me up in the afternoon sure. would be consumed more often than a drink with alcohol that you're hopefully not starting every morning with or having <laughs> to pick me up in the afternoon. But having a coffee in the morning before work isn't all that unique to Germany, but Germany does have a unique coffee and cake tradition that is somewhat similar to a British afternoon tea. This is a sub note and a bonus thing we didn't know about until after we moved to Germany, but coffee and cake, literally just having a delicious slice of cake and coffee as an afternoon pause with family and friends is our absolute favorite German tradition that we have now picked up ourselves. So besides the same consumption habits that Americans may have, Germany just simply has coffee built into their culture that I never knew about since beer seems to be the drink that overshadows 
all others that foreigners know about Germany. Maybe Germany needs to have an Oktoberfest of coffee to spread awareness of their coffee culture? Oh, mm. a coffee and cake fest as big as Oktoberfest? Now we're talking. How big would that go? I would like a slice of cake. I'm not a coffee drinker, but a slice of cake every day, you know? Uh, that would that'd absolutely be perfect. I'd absolutely be down for that. Uh, that would be great. But instead of a coffee, just give me a Coke. Give me a Coca-Cola. My soda of choice. Uh, where did all our neighbors go? One of the big reasons we wanted to move into Germany besides just learning about German culture was to be able to travel easily around Europe and visit lots of other cultures as well. We came in with ideas of places we really wanted to travel to, but as we have lived here, this list has definitely grown a lot as we have learned about more interesting places and have received recommendations from Europeans themselves. But one place we had never heard of until we moved to Germany but were told is the place for Germans to travel to for holiday is Mallorca. Mallorca is a Spanish Mediterranean island with a population of about a 900,000 that an estimated 4.2 million Germans will visit this year alone. God, Tourism dang. and tourist destinations obviously suffered during the pandemic, but one quote I found on this topic for Mallorca that I found particularly interesting in highlighting just how many Germans travel to Mallorca every year, if there are no tourists, there's no jobs. And without the Germans, there's no work. And to even mm. further prove just how important this island is to Germans, as many of you know, I am currently working on preparing for the German citizenship exam. One of the questions mm. asked is how many states does Germany have? And the answer is 17, with the Spanish island of Mallorca being the 17th German Bundesland. Well, mm. on the official exam, the answer is actually 16, but Mallorca is often <laughs> referred to jokingly as Germany's 17th Bundesland just because of how many Germans go there. So this probably should be fixed on the citizenship exam. Now, we've still not that. personally made it to Mallorca to experience it for ourselves and to find out exactly what it is about Mallorca that has the Germans loading Balaman <laughs> music into their radios and rubbing in the sunscreen. But I read one explanation being, besides the beautiful weather, close location to Germany or low costs, when Germans like somewhere, they don't want to change. Feeling at home while on holiday is a big must for Germans. I don't know, let me know in the comments, have you been to Mallorca or Maybe a better question is, how many times have you been to Mallorca? And what is it about Mallorca that draws so many Germans over other islands or beach destinations in Europe? As an American, I've never even heard of Mallorca, but uh, the way that the, all, all these Germans are flooding to it for vacation, uh, it might sound like the place to be. It, it, it said like it's probably gonna be an amazing place. Uh, but yeah, any Germans watching, why Mallorca? Have you been there? How was it? What was your, what was the experiences you had? Talk to me. Before moving to Germany, I had no idea idea just how outdoorsy Germans generally tend to be. But even beyond just how much they love the outdoors, I had no idea that when we got to Germany, we would find everybody walking around with Nordic hiking poles. When we first moved here, we would see a few people walking our town streets using hiking poles. And since we had only ever seen them when people were hiking mountains in say Colorado, yeah. we thought they looked a little out of place on our city's perfectly smooth, flat, and paved streets. But then we started noticing more and more Germans using them in situations we never would have thought someone would need hiking poles. And also young people were using them where we thought maybe it was just an elderly thing to use them so that they could keep their balance while walking. We we even see dedicated trails in the hills around our area that are for Nordic hiking pole users. And going back to the Alman, mm. there are plenty of Alman memes that talk about whipping out your Nordic <laughs> hiking poles when going on a walk like a true German. Now, where we mm. once thought a stereotypical German will have a beer in hand, now we know they actually have Nordic hiking poles <laughs> and coffee in hand. However, along with learning that Germans love them a good set of hiking poles, I have also actually learned some of the real benefits of using them and maybe 
why mm. the Germans love them so much. What okay. I always thought were just supposed to help keep your balance or give you four points of contact to the ground when hiking on treacherous terrain, I've now learned they specifically have much greater health benefits and uses. Nordic hiking poles are to keep you upright and take the pressure off of your joints. They also engage more of your body's muscles when walking rather than just your legs as they also engage the really? upper body, which is supposed to provide more calorie burning benefits. So with Amazing. German stereotypically loving efficiency, it only makes sense that they would love using something that can take their normal low calorie burning walk and turn it into a full body efficient calorie burning exercise. <laughs> I like the way y'all do things, Germany. Like the way y'all y'all kicked efficiency in there. I said, hey, hey, let's burn more calories. Let's use the Nordic poles. Let's, let's, let's activate our whole body. I like that. Yeah, that'd be interesting for me to see just people like on a, just a regular walk like down a regular street using the Nordic poles. That would definitely be different. <laughs> there are certain personality traits or social norms that americans generally accept as being typically german things like speaking very directly being brutally honest and hating small talk but one yeah. characteristic of german social life that i learned only after moving to germany and after having lived here for a while was pointed out to me as proof that i was germanizing as i somewhat unfortunately had started to adopt and that is mm. Germans love to complain. Big time complainers. When you move to a new place, especially one as amazing as Germany, you kind of go through some different stages. Your first stage is the honeymoon phase where everything is magical, the differences are exciting and fun, and you feel like you're living in a fairy tale, and in our case, where Germany could do no wrong. Sure, there's bureaucracy, but you don't care because you are living your dream in a foreign country. Then, eventually, reality sets in. For us, it was our second or third winter in Germany where we now knew that winters here are rainy, cold, gray, it gets dark super early, and it's kind of depressing. When this reality set in, some of the magic started to rub off, and I was in one of these dark and gloomy periods in the fall of 2021 and made a few videos where I was talking about the fairly crummy weather in Germany and seasonal depression it can bring. And I started getting comments like, complaining about the weather? Congratulations. Now you're beginning to be a real German. Or you are starting to become more and more Germanized. I don't know what could be more German than complaining about the weather, and so many more. That, that, that's the thing right there. Are you reaching for a German citizenship? You are complaining about the weather like a German. Coming more and more German. You really arrived in Germany, made a whole video complaining about the weather. You're German now. <laughs> so that, 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 that's y'all's favorite thing to do? Favorite pastime? Let's complain about this weather. It's crap. Now, complaining about things is obviously just part of being human, but I can yeah. certainly say from my personal experience, it does seem to be something that Germans have mastered. But why is this? Well, I would have naively just pinned it to the weather like Germans love to complain about so much. I mean, it's so gray and rainy for so long in Germany. How could you not become a complainer? But an interesting characteristic is that it isn't just bad, rainy, and gray weather Germans complain about. They also can be known to complain when it is too bright and hot when it's sunny sometimes. But a DW article on this subject interviewed a psychologist from Hamburg named Michael Thiel, in which he explained we Germans carry deep-seated dissatisfaction and a certain burden with us in everyday life. In the various social orders of the past, people weren't independent actors, but rather serfs. Added to this are dozens of wars, including the Thirty Years' War and two world wars. Lamenting is culturally inherited and disruptions such as these have an enduring effect. As an American, I can definitely okay. say that sometimes all the complaining <laughs> and moaning can be a little draining as some of our German acquaintances seem to focus yeah. on the negatives of life a little more than what we are used to. But at the end of the day, we know that life is really extremely good in Germany, and we know that Germans know this as well, so we can take it as just a unique cultural attribute. To see who made it this far into the video, the- We're gonna go ahead and stop it right there. Yeah. I I mean, like you said, it's human nature to complain, but yeah, if I don't like being around people like who complain too much, uh, just cause did like like I start getting that way too. I start complaining about things. I'm like, oh no, uh, but I absolutely love this. Shout out my fellow, not my fellow, cause I'm not German. Shout out my awesome Germans. That's all we got for this one. You guys got a favorite video suggestion? You can subscribe to Patreon or drop it in the comment section. It's your boy Dina out.